Hello, uh, my name is Peter Hammond uh, and I'm a consultant diabetologist um, in Harrogate. Uh, welcome to this module on getting started with the Freestyle Libre. Uh, I think it's helpful to begin with to understand what it is that the Freestyle Libre is measuring. You'll see from this picture here that the Freestyle Libre um, has a sensor that is placed in the interstitial fluid um, and therefore the Freestyle Libre is measuring glucose in interstitial fluid rather than in the blood. As you'll also see from this schematic, there is glucose in the blood which balances out with the glucose in the interstitial fluid so that in time uh, the glucose levels in the two compartments are the same. But there can be a lag between uh, the glucose in the bloodstream and the glucose in the interstitial fluid and this is demonstrated in this slide which shows blood glucose levels and interstitial fluid glucose levels as the blood glucose levels change um, and increase and then decrease. And you'll see that there's a delay of between 5 and 15 minutes between the change in blood glucose and the change in interstitial glucose. The faster that the blood glucose is changing, the longer this delay becomes and the greater the difference between the glucose measured in the interstitial fluid and the blood glucose. So it's important to bear in mind that when glucose levels are changing quickly, the Freestyle Libre will give a less accurate measurement uh, of what blood glucose levels are likely to be than it will when blood glucose levels are stable. So if you're thinking about checking whether the sensor is accurate or not, you should do that at a time when blood glucose levels are stable and therefore the interstitial fluid glucose and the blood glucose are likely to be pretty similar. Generally speaking, uh, there is a difference between sensor glucose and blood glucose which averages about 10% depending on the individual sensor. To measure this, we use a thing called MARD which is the average difference between the sensor and blood glucose levels measured over a whole range of measured glucose levels and taken from a large number of sensors. But you can see from this graph that for some sensors the difference is as little as 5%, whereas occasionally there is a difference of over 20% between sensor and blood glucose, although generally speaking it's roughly between 8 and 12%. What the graph doesn't tell you is the difference at particular glucose levels, and the difference is usually a bit greater when the blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per litre. In general, the difference remains stable over the lifetime of, in, of an individual sensor. So if you've checked it uh, a couple of times at the beginning of the sensor, it's likely to remain the same throughout. This slide demonstrates some of the variability you see in blood glucose and interstitial glucose levels. As mentioned earlier, you should check to see whether the interstitial fluid glucose and blood glucose levels are similar at a time when the blood glucose level is steady. You'll see from this example that here the interstitial glucose level is reading a bit lower than the blood glucose level. So where the rings uh, are shown on the slide you can see that the difference between the blood and interstitial glucose level is between about 1.1 and 1.8 millimoles per litre. And generally speaking, the Libre will tend to read a bit lower than the blood glucose levels if there is a discrepancy. Um, and this is particularly true in the first 24 hours. So some people um, will put their new sensor in and wait 24 hours to activate it um, so that this uh, phenomenon does not cause a problem. However, generally speaking, if your sensor glucose is less than 4 millimoles per litre, then we would recommend that you check a blood glucose level to be absolutely sure uh, what is happening and whether indeed um, you are hypoglycemic or not. How often should you scan with the Freestyle Libre? What is a, the right amount, if you like, um, to get the best out of the, the device? So you'll see from this uh, slide um, some data about the frequency of measuring blood glucose levels um, and how that uh, equates with the HbA1c, the overall level of blood glucose control, and compare this with what happens um, with using the Freestyle Libre, which is defined here as flash glucose monitoring. Uh, 
So the grey shows that the more frequently you're measuring your capillary blood glucose, the better your HbA1c. And the results are very similar when you look at the number of times that the Freestyle Libre is scanned uh, per day. So that roughly speaking, about 10 scans per day or 10 blood glucose measurements a day helps people to achieve target HbA1c levels. So if you're thinking how often to scan, uh, the message is that people achieving a target HbA1c of less than 58 millimoles per mole are usually scanning at least 10 times per day. So some general starting advice. When should you scan the sensor um, to determine what the glucose levels are? Well, a good rule of thumb is to do this on waking, before meals, two to three hours after meals, and before bed. If you exercise, it's worth doing it before and after exercise, and possibly during exercise if this lasts more than half an hour. And remember that you must scan at least once every eight hours in order to get a continuous record of what the interstitial glucose levels have been like over a 24 hour period. Remember to be aware of the sensor lag and to check blood glucose levels if you feel high or low rather than relying on the interstitial glucose value and try to check blood glucose levels at least once per day to make sure that the sensor glucose remains reliable. At the moment, DVLA advice suggests that you should be measuring your blood glucose levels in relation to driving, but this may change uh, in the near future and the Freestyle Libre may be allowed some of the time, probably depending on what the glucose levels are like. Initially, we would suggest that you do not act on the sensor glucose, unless you definitely need to do something, for example, um, if it's very low or very high. Um, but review the trends after 48 to 72 hours, and then consider whether some action um, at any particular time point might have helped uh, to correct uh, a, a high or low blood glucose level at that time. This shows the problems that you can run into if you overreact to the measures that you see uh, from the Freestyle Libre. Um, so this is a, a phenomenon known as insulin stacking. And in this example, uh, the person gives a bolus of insulin with three different um, meals or snacks uh, so that they give the bolus in line with the recommendation from their bolus calculator and the glucose levels start to fall as expected. But when they scan at just before four o'clock, they see that the glucose level is still greater than 10 millimoles per litre and decide it isn't coming down fast enough, so they give another bolus even though the bolus calculator would not have recommended it. As a result, they become hypoglycemic and then they run into problems because they overcorrect the hypoglycemia and give a further bolus dose, causing another rapid fall. So this shows that you should avoid giving extra insulin unless you're absolutely certain um, that it is necessary. Uh, and the bolus calculator is always a good way uh, of determining uh, that a bolus is needed and avoiding uh, this phenomenon of stacking. So to act or not to act, avoid stacking insulin doses and over-treating hypoglycemia as shown in that example. And um, one of the important rules of thumb is to not correct an interstitial glucose level uh, that you've got within about two and a half hours of a bolus dose. So after meals, um, don't worry if the blood glucose level is high um, up to about two and a half hours after the meal. And if you find that it's consistently higher than you'd expect, then you may need to think about giving your bolus insulin earlier before the meal. Um, and in general, that the bolus should be given about 20 minutes before any meal. You'll see from the graphic uh, on the left-hand side of this slide, that if you're able to achieve more than 60% of time in range uh, of four to 10 millimoles per litre, uh, then you should achieve an HbA1c of less than 58 millimoles per mole. And if you can get that time in range up to greater than 70%, uh, then you can achieve an HbA1c uh, of less than 53 millimoles per mole. What about skin reactions with the Libre? These do occur in certain uh, situations and uh, tend to depend on the individual and how sensitive they are. Um, in the largest study of the Freestyle Libre, just under 10% of people had skin reactions and these were severe in about 5% of cases. 
However, changes have since been made to the sensor so that skin reactions are less likely to occur now. But if you do get problems with skin reactions, then these often respond to barrier sprays such as Cavalon, which is shown here, or to applying zinc ointment or hydrocortisone cream um, to the skin before applying the sensor, or perhaps using different sites where the skin may be uh, less sensitive. However, in terms of sites, it's, remembering, it's worth remembering that the Freestyle Libre should be worn on the arm and not elsewhere. So the Libre is very accurate when assessed against finger prick testing, um, provided that it's applied to the arm. So 86% of Libre readings fall within the most accurate category um, if it's applied on the arm. But this drops significantly if the Libre is applied elsewhere, such as the abdomen. So uh, you can move the Libre around, um, but only using it uh, on the upper arm. So in conclusion, remember that the Freestyle Libre is measuring interstitial fluid rather than blood glucose, and that Libre readings may differ from blood glucose readings by between 5 and 20%. If you've any doubt about the Freestyle Libre reading, either in general or particularly if blood glucose levels um, feel high or low, um, then check a blood glucose um, to make sure that the Libre is reading accurately. Avoid making too many changes in response to Freestyle Libre data before you are used to looking at the data. Um, and set a time in range at around 4 to 10 millimoles per litre in most circumstances, aiming for uh, at least 60% time in range in order to achieve a target HbA1c. And finally, always remember to wear the Libre on the upper arm as this is where it's most accurate. Thank you.